Hello everyone, this is the first entry in the series of videos I'm going to be making around the development process of Scape. To get started, let me first compile and run the application. In this episode, I would like to quickly go through the UI to set up some context. There is a bunch of panes on the screen and uh, every pane is accessible through the main menu and we can choose to pin or unpin each of them. In the middle of the screen, we have the viewport and uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. We can navigate around it using the left mouse button to orbit, pressing the wheel to pan around, using the wheel to zoom in and uh, using the right mouse button to look around. We can also use WASD keys to get into fly mode and we can hold down shift to accelerate the fly through speed. Q and E keys function pretty much very similar to Unreal Engine and Blender and they can elevate or lower the camera. Here uh, in the bottom of the viewport there is a toolbar with most commonly used actions this is where we can interact with history and different camera positions, editing modes, generation process, etc. Let's get into top-down view first. The visualization pane over here is mainly used for visual debugging purposes to turn on or off certain rendering features. Some of these features might be useful in the final release, but most of them will probably be left only for development builds. There are three main modes of operation. We can interact with the engine through textures for procedural generation, manual road editing and manual lane editing. Let's take a look at lanes first. Now that we're in the lane mode, we have a set of actions we can perform. We can create two types of lanes mainly, linear segments and circular arc segments. Let's place a simple linear segment first. Once the segment is placed, we can get into editing mode by pressing the hand icon. Now we can select the lane and change the start and end positions. We can also create an arc like so. It's also possible to move the arc around and it's also possible to edit the normals of the arc lane segment like so. We can do the same thing with line segments, except that the normals always stay collinear due to the nature of a line segment. Each lane has its own direction, which is used to control the flow of traffic. And the direction is getting respected when the merge happens. Lane uh, is the most atomic part of the engine, and as of now, I do not intend to procedurally generate lanes. That's where the roads will come in. We will take a closer look at that in a few moments. It's also possible to cut lanes, like so, and of course, remove them. There are actually four types of splines that are at play here. There is a line segment, there is a circular arc, there is an arc line spline, and there is an arc line arc spline. Now, when we place a simple line, like so, and we have another line merge into the first line, the engine tries to reconcile the normals at the ends of the line that we're dragging. And during the snapping process, it meets an unresolvable situation. Since in a linear segment, both normals should be collinear to the start and end positions. Now, when things like this happen, the engine typically will try to promote the spline to an arc line or an arc line arc spline, which means that uh, basically a spline will be a superset of several more atomic splines. Now, if the promotion succeeds, the super spline gets demoted back and injected into the graph. This is a solution I ended up with through trials and errors, and it seems to be the easiest one to manage at the moment. 
Splines in general I think deserve their own video where I could get into more details on the problems I met and the solutions I came up with. Now we can switch to the road editing mode. Roads work in a similar fashion. We can place linear roads and circular arc roads. I still haven't implemented the arc roads yet, so that's work for the future iterations. Now, in contrast to lanes, road segments don't merge in the same manner that lanes do. Instead, they form crossroads. Every time two roads get connected, there is always a crossroad emerging between them. We can also create a road and snap another road along it. Under the hood, this would cut the target segment into two halves, create a crossroad between them, and merge the road we're currently dragging into that newly created crossroad. Of course, at any point, all of these operations can fail due to a number of reasons. So the system supports snapshots of state and rollbacks in case of a failed operation. Every successful operation gets injected into the timeline and persisted in an efficient manner. The timeline itself is a fairly sophisticated and an interesting concept. It handles speedy history traversal, rollbacks, snapshots, seeking, dirty states and reapplication of commands. And uh, again, it deserves a whole video dedicated to it. The roads can be also cut and of course removed. Now we can take a look at the highest level uh, of abstraction, which is the texture generation. We can switch into painting mode like so. Now this is a good point to go through the channels overview. By default we have a single layer created on the application startup. Now there is also a concept of cursors. There are two cursors that we can make use of. The first one is the paint cursor and the second one is the view cursor. View cursor is responsible for rendering the contents of the layer onto the screen and the paint cursor is responsible to reroute our strokes and paint them into the selected layer. That way we can view a parent layer while drawing into the child layer. Unlike in Photoshop, there is no single layer at the root of the tree. This is because we might want to have many different channels mapped to many different unconnected layers. That's why I decided to separate the view cursor from the painting cursor. In Photoshop, for example, all of the layers get composed into the parent layer, which is suitable for a drawing application, but not really a good fit for managing channels separately. I can create a sub layer for layer zero Let's call it sublayer one. And we can also create another layer and call it uh, sublayer two. Now we can start drawing into the sublayers. This is where the brush pane comes in handy. Here we can configure our brush size, brush hardness, spacing, splatter, and the brush color. Now that we have some pixel data inside of our layers, we can map different channels to each of the individual layers. We can hover over a layer, go to the assignment menu, and then pick a channel we would like to choose. Each of the channels can only have one layer assigned to it, but layers can have multiple channels assigned to them. This can come in handy when we have a map uh, that might be used to drive several parameters of the engine at once. The branching nature of the tree structure is also very useful if we want to have one channel mapped to result 
of blending of several other channels, for example. And of course, every channel can be deleted, renamed, or moved around to change the order of blending operations. Currently, I started working on the actual generation of the road networks. Now that I have the core functionality of managing road segments and crossroads and access to texture editing tools, it should be more or less straightforward to look up the parameters that would drive the simulation from the pixel buffers and calculate placement and amount of road segments. Of course, there are lots of bugs present and lots of performance issues, but my overall philosophy when it comes to software development is to just make it work at first. It might be crude and ugly, but I should get through the whole user cycle at least once uh, before I can make further decisions regarding optimization and bettering the UI and UX flows. There are lots of unforeseen challenges on every iteration of development and I get stuck quite often, but I guess that's why we're here. See you next time and hopefully I will have something interesting to show.